Hello everyone and welcome to Jody Helps Out Quick Tip Number 2. Now in this video what we're going to cover is how to rename your files to make them sequential. Now let me give you a scenario. You have a client and this client suggests, well, you meet a client who needs a video. You're an editor or you could be a regular Mac user and just want to organize things around your Mac. So let's say they give you uh, different types of media from different places, but they're all common. So for example, here in my desktop, I have various uh, videos. Now if you could tell, I have one that's titled chocolate, another that's just called fondue, types, uh, 12ID, when host, they have different names, but they're all relative to this video, which is set 15. Okay, great. So in this case, I have a lot of different sets. I have set number one, set number two. Now in this case, all of these videos that you're seeing on the desktop belong and pertain to set number 15. But I don't want to go individually and rename set 15 dash one, set 15 dash two. I want to do them all at once. It's possible. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, now, right now, I could totally do that. I could go set 15, 1, set 15, 2, but let's say I'm working with thousands or maybe even hundreds of videos and I have to do them all at once. I'm not going to do that. So let's get started. So first thing you want to do is you want to open the application Automator. Now Automator comes by default in every Mac. It, it's like a uh, background application that you won't really use unless you're specific and it's pretty cool. So let's get started. <laughs> For reals now. So go to command space and type in Automator. Perfect. Now, once Automator pops open, you have several options. You have a workflow, application, service, all these icons. What are they? Don't worry about it. What we're going to do is we're going to do and perform a folder action. So you want to select this icon that says folder action, click on it once, and click choose. I'm running on 10.7.2 Lion, just letting you guys know. Now, you might see this interface and you might say, what is this? Don't worry about it. I'll tell you what's what and what we're going to do. Now, notice here you have actions and variables. We're going to work with actions in this case. So we're going to go and we're going to scroll down to this icon, files and folders. It actually has the icon of this finder. So let's click on it once. Perfect. Now we have a lot of actions here on the right hand side. Great. Now what you want to do is you want to hover over where it says get specified finder items because we're going to get specific types of items found somewhere using the finder. So you want to click on it and drag it into your workflow. As I let go, boom, it's there. Don't worry about it. I'll explain everything in a minute. Now, second item you want to drag from this, um, from this column to this is actually rename finder items, which is found right here in the bottom. So click on it drag it, place it over, let go. Now there might be a little message and it says this action will change the names of the finder items. Perfect. You just want to click on add. Now, great. Now it actually gives us one extra step and we have to get rid of the step. It says copy finder items to desktop. Now you could do this if you'd like if you want to keep the original files, the original uh, you know naming conventions of the original files, you could do that. So that way you have duplicates of the newly renamed files. Now if you want to do that, go ahead. But for this sake, I'm not going to do that. I just want to make this into a permanent solution. So I'm going to X this out, this option out. Perfect. Now let me explain what's going on here. You might be wondering, what's up? What are we going to do? So basically, think of this as a human digestive body, I guess. It's actually really, really similar. What you're going to do is you're going to get specified finder items. Now, in this case, it's the desktop. Uh, it's in my desktop, all of the files. I'm going to get those, and basically, those are my, I guess, food. And then I'm going to place them in my mouth, and I'm going to eat them. And then, <laughs> it sounds funky, but it's, it's actually the same thing. And then it's going to go down to the digestive system and rename it. And finally, it's going to... 
well, you know, deliver them in the different name. So let's let's do that. Let's add some files by clicking on this item. You can also drag from the finder into this window. So click on add. Perfect. Now let's go to desktop and what do you know, we're here in desktop. What we're going to do now is all of these files that I showed you earlier are in my desktop. They're just in a different view. So basically you want to select the first one, scroll down, hold shift, and click on the one on the very, very bottom. So you could uh, select everything. Okay, great. It's actually selecting everything, it's just video lag. So, once I add them, you're going to see all of the different files here on my workflow. Now what you want to do is you want to go down to the add date or time, and instead of add date or time, we're going to make this sequential. So go down to the option that says sequential. Great. Now we have numerous options here. It says add number to existing item name or new name. Now in this case, we don't want to keep the existing item name. We want to make an entirely new one. So in this new name, I'm going to retitle this set 15 because it is taking place in set 15. I'm going to be fancy and I'm going to put an underscore 15. Great. That's it. Don't put an extra space on it after it. Now it says here, place number after name or before name, whatever is your preference. And then start numbers at 1. You could start at 0, but, you know, for, I guess, logical reasons, I'm going to start with 1. Now it says here, separated by what? A dash, a period, a space, underscore, or nothing. Now you could, it's basically your preference. In this case, I'm just going to select a dash. And perfect, that's all I that's all I need. So now what I want to do is I want to click on this button that says run. Great. I'm going to click on it and let's see what happens. Now it says th this folder action will not receive input when run inside automator. Basically that's another option if you're doing a workflow or something else. It's basically telling you that automator is just going to be I guess the digestive system. It's not going to actually digest anything. So, you know, just for the sake of simplicity, click OK. Great. Did you hear that little chime? That means it's done. So let's go back, and you probably noticed that um, there was, like, uh, everything rearranged. So let's go back. Let's just uh, X out of uh, Automator. Great. Now look at this. Everything is renamed appropriately. So let me uh, sort by name. Great. Alrighty. So as you can tell, set underscore 15 dash 1, set 15 underscore dash 2, set 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's awesome. Now you could do this with anything you want. You can do this with uh, files, Word documents, anything. That's how you do it using Automator, especially on a Mac. Well, it's actually only on a Mac. So this was quick tip number two. I know this was uh, probably a little bit long, but it's actually really, really useful if you're either an editor or an everyday Mac user. Hope this helped, and I'll see you next time. Alrighty, thank you very much for listening.